This video from almost three years ago shows a sick old Tamor McIntyre in a small room with police, uncomfortable, wiping his eyes at times, and finally admitting to investigators he played a role in a home invasion in Mansfield. And his song about running from crime made him known, but teenage rapper TK will not be able to run from a now 55-year prison sentence, delivered in fact by a jury earlier today in Fort Worth. And there was a stream of corrections officers, one after the next after the next, who talked about the problems that they have had with him in jail since he was caught. And as people were walking up and down that hallway, he would either yell at them or try to reach out and grab them, but through what appeared to be wet paper, I had another inmate that was using the phone. They also caught him with a cell phone, that in and itself. Yeah, yeah, I, I, got a, I got a tablet, like I got an iPad, I'll be listening to music in his home. Tay K gets thrown in solitary or whatever like a couple of days later because in the interview, and I, I didn't even like think about it because in my head, like the, the, the impetus is off me to remove anything from the interview because the management said they were gonna remove it. The management did not ask me to remove the part where he talked about having an iPad. Hey yo squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. You know these rappers are getting locked up like it's the new trend. One of the most popular rappers who sabotaged their career by getting caught doing some crimes is TK47, also known as TK. Bro might not see the light of day until he's old and gray, but that hasn't stopped him from raising hell behind bars. Still thugging, still banging, still rebellious. He's racking up more charges, even serving 55 years, but he believes he can come home. But can he? We'll find out looking at his life behind bars. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. Taymor Trayvon McIntyre, also known as Tay K, was just another boy born in the trenches. The hood saw him growing, molding himself into a wild younger with no respect for any life. He was kicking it with the wolves so he became one himself. Just that TK was a different breed that would soon go too far on his quest for being gang gang. Fast forward to July 26, 2016, TK was charged along with six others in connection with a home invasion that left 21-year-old Ethan Walker deceased. His roommate was dating a shorty that backdoored him. Old girl exposed to TK and the gang bro was moving weight and had to stash at the crib. TK and them popped up, but things went sideways and both Zach and Ethan were shot with Ethan getting hit in the heart area, losing his life. They messed up letting Zach survive, but the big man upstairs was looking out for bro. With Zach alive, TK and them identities were known and they were arrested. A survivor of the shooting, Zach Below, testified today he realized he'd been set up for the crime by a girl he thought he was dating. That's a point McIntyre's defense team has been keen on, that five other individuals, along with the were actually responsible for planning the robbery. Tay K was released on house arrest, but bro was too much of a menace to realize the dire situation he was in. Instead, Tay K not only cut off his ankle monitor and went on the run, but he documented it all online for everybody to see. I know the cops was mad pressed with that tweet, even more so when Tay K dropped one of the most iconic tracks entitled The Race with a music video while on the run where he rapped about his entire escape. Tay K was driving around bumping the track in broad daylight like it was nothing. U.S. Marshals wasn't going for it and caught bro the same day the video dropped. Tay K tried to outsmart him, hitting him with the old I swallow some pills and I was hearing voices trick. But they did a psych test and called bro bluff. It was months after that interrogation scene on video that McIntyre cut off his GPS monitoring bracelet and went on the run. A U.S. Marshal Task Force member uh, testified today that when they found him later, in New Jersey and caught up to him and arrested him. He made up stories about swallowing a bunch of pills and even about hearing voices in order to try to stay out of jail. Yeah. <laughs> Tay K was extradited back to Tarrant County where his life behind bars began. At this point, I don't even think Tay K realized just how deep he was in it. He sent out a letter from behind bars trying to get onto the Double XL Freshman 2018 list. In the letter, he talks about having the biggest hit, the race, and states that he came from the streets to the charts and from iron to platinum. Turns out, bro was out doing drills while on the run, allegedly taking the life of 23-year-old Mark Saldivar and accused of giving a vicious case of the beats to a 65-year-old before robbing him and leaving him for dead. Prosecutors are also bringing up other crimes where McIntyre is accused. He was holding a, a 38 pistol and had it pointed like this steady as could be toward my head. 
Skip Pepe said it was McIntyre who robbed him at gunpoint while he was on the run in 2017. But the defense team spent hours poking holes in the story, pushing Pepe to the brink on the witness stand. I did everything that day but take a selfie with this kid that beat me nearly to death, okay? We're gonna get so there. let's stop playing the games. TK's attorney was trying to secure a bond, but with all of the new allegations along with him playing in the judge face with the race, the judge wasn't going for it and removed any bond deals from the table. TK could care less. Bro was behind them prison walls stocking up on hella snacks for the winner and still throwing up gang signs. Now y'all know my shorty good. My shorty gonna be good. He in the streets and he out. <laughs> I think he just dated that big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> my niggas. <laughs> the opposite. The other side, man. You already know what's going on. The other side, man. According to him and Say Cheese jail call interview, everyone respected him behind bars. Are people noticing you inside the jail? I mean, yeah, like just because the newspapers, you know, they they bring the newspapers to jail. When I walk on the hallway, all the all the old heads, because I'm on 24 hour lockdown. So when I right. walk in the hallway, all the old heads, they, they scream, is that KK-47? You know, just shit like that. You know, they fuck with me, everybody fuck with me. Dude. But things began looking like it was taking a toll on the rapper. His time went on and his case weighed on his mind. A video was surfaced that appears to show Tay K getting emotional while talking to the homies. Don't forget that shit, boy. Oh, God, bro. Love you, shit. I don't need no mom forever, bro. Real that shit, bro. Oh, gee. Then, photos would emerge showing Tay K no longer with his prison green drip on, but instead he had what was described as a protection suit, giving the impression that Tay K was on the verge of giving in and harming himself. Tay K's manager would hop on IG posting an explanation for the pic, saying it was all a tactical move. Apparently, Tay K was locked in solitary and in an attempt to dodge the harsh treatment he was getting behind bars, he pretended that he was losing it and going to harm himself. That didn't make things seem any better because he he basically confirmed that Tay K was being given hell behind bars by the officials. That didn't mean that Tay K wasn't giving them hell back though. In fact, during the case, correctional officers testified that Tay K was a minister staff, going as far as taunting them along the halls, trying to grab them and hold them, and even tossing wet toilet paper on inmates. And there was a stream of corrections officers, one after the next after the next, who talked about the problems that they have had with him in jail since he was caught. And as people were walking up and down that hallway, he would either yell at them or try to reach out and grab them, but threw what appeared to be wet paper at another inmate that was using the phone. But that wasn't the worst of Tay K's life in a cell. Apparently, Tay K was found with a phone in jail, and prosecutors couldn't wait to add that to his growing list of charges. Tay K was unlucky with electronics behind them bars. In 2018, he linked up with Adam from No Jumper on a jail call interview and slipped up stating that he'd been jamming out the tunes on his iPad. We got this song coming out real soon, this hard song. Uh, we ended up putting Blockboy JB on it, and uh, uh, nobody's ever heard you speak on this song at all. So, uh, have you heard it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, got a, I got a tablet. Like, I got an iPad. I'll be listening to music in this. That would get Tay K tossed in the hole after his management reviewed and okayed the interview without thinking to remove that part. The interview comes out, Tay K gets thrown in solitary or whatever, like, a couple of days later, because in the interview, and I, I didn't even, like, think about it, because in my head, like, the, the, the impetus is off me to remove anything from the interview because the management said they were going to remove it. The management did not ask me to remove the part where he talked about having an iPad. That interview in question was used to promote the track Hard with Block Boy, released under No Jumper. The track legit went hard too. You, you, you was on some op shit. I was cruising the block with a chopstick. Rock star. Now I need a rock bitch. Trench Facts, Tay K recorded the verse for Har while on the run at a studio in New Jersey. Yeah, I wrote this. Wait. I think, when did I write this? I think that was like, that was like three days before I got locked up when I recorded it. Oh, holy shit, it was right, right before you got locked up. Yeah, they had posted me on the news and shit. 
like, hey, bro, we got to go to the studio. So I went to the studio in New Jersey and recorded it. Take K shenanigans rubbed the jail personnel the wrong way. The electronic devices were the last straw. Before that, he got into it with an inmate and they were already considering moving him to a maximum security prison. Now, it was without a doubt that that's what they was going to do. And Tay K was moved to a maximum security joint, Los Evans Correctional. Tay K went from bad to worse. He was on 23 hour lockdown and only had one hour allowed for gym. By this time, things weren't looking too good or too promising for Tay K. But if it's one thing bro was looking forward to was that he was going to be out anytime soon. If you ask Tay K, he was finna beat the case, no doubts about it. Confidence was over 9,000. I uh, want to talk about like, you know, what, what you got planned, like in terms of your, your case and everything, in terms of how you think it might play out. Yeah, no, nah, see, how it play out, I don't really have no plan. I, I'm going to beat the case. Yeah. Tay K not only was writing songs behind bars to drop when he got out, but he released his mixtape Santana World composed mainly of his old tracks so he could have it on iTunes to make some bank while locked up. Tay K was keeping the hope alive. But as if all of his legal woes wasn't enough, Tay K just couldn't stay out of trouble. Inmate documents would show another charge added to his growing list of woes this time for possession of a prohibited substance. Tay K was fighting an uphill battle, and it was like he was willingly adding more weight on himself. Well, on one of his co-defendants, Ariana Barat, was about to sink him even further away from freedom. Seeing the numbers ahead of her, she agreed to testify on Tay K in order to reduce her sentence from 25 years. It's crazy how Tay K risked it all to become buzzing in the rap game taunting the cops, and now he's just falling from grace like a ton of bricks. Bro needed somebody to just tell him, yo, slow down. Tay K was speeding, bruh, and you think by now with all that stacked up against him, he'd chill. But hell nah, Tay K up the ante. Prosecutors would submit documents alleging Tay K assaulted a fellow inmate and attempted to start a new game called the Rugrats while behind bars. Bro was wild to the core, man. Tay K had referenced himself as a Rugrat in the past, even on his Santana World track, Saran Pack, where he rapped, Bitch, I'm a Rugrat, I don't know how to love back. Tay K allegedly had everything from rules to laws of power to gang structure, everything. The report from prosecutors went on to say something even wilder. It stated that Tay K was behind bars refusing to give up the phone he got caught with, saying, I'm not going to give you the phone. You're not going to bully me. You're going to have to come and take it. But, 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 but wait, there's more. Tay K was allegedly threatening everything moving and also the sergeant. I see you on the street, you better run. Tay K was bone thugging with no harmony. Everybody could become a pack, and he was allegedly slamming inmates' heads on the wall, nearly catching a body while fighting a case for a body. Prosecutors couldn't wait to do him in, and on July 2019, Tay K's fate was revealed. He pled guilty to two counts of aggravated robbery, but not the hit charge. Tay K was found guilty and sentenced to 55 years for his role in the 2016 homicide. Doug, the jury deliberated for a little longer than three hours today here before deciding on that 55-year sentence. That song that raised the profile of Tamor Tay K McIntyre in the end also likely played a role in that prison sentence. Ironically, his viral hit The Race played a role in painting him as a dangerous gang-affiliated rapper that had no care for human life or the law. And just like that, Tay K the Younger with so much potential was swept in the pile of rappers lost to bad decisions inspired by the trenches. Tay K moved on to try to do some good behind bars pursuing his GED. I, I, I dropped out in ninth grade. See, it gets way harder after that, too. 10th, 11th, man, that shit's impossible. Yeah, fuck this. Nah, Yo, I, cool is good, though. I'm, I, I'm working on my DD right now. Oh, you are working on it. That's dope. Is that, is that like, filling up your time a lot? Still, time showed that Tay K can't catch a break. November 2020, rumors were spread saying Tay K got his sentence extended after shanking a prison guard. Already fighting for an appeal, his management quickly shut down those rumors and said Tay K would be home soon. Tay K, however, seems to think his current team doesn't have what it takes to make that appeal successful, and he made it known tweeting he needs a new appeal lawyer. On Tay K's Twitter existed words that probably was the most genuine from the rapper since. Seems the reality behind bars eventually started to sink in. Tay K apologized for acting immaturely with his past actions, but also blasted his management, 
labels, and team for silencing him and says he will no longer let the media paint him to be some type of monster because it's not true. The messed up thing is, TK is still facing more charges for the dude that he allegedly murked and the 65 year old he assaulted and robbed while on the run allegedly. It's a long road ahead for the once buzzing rapper. He seems to believe he can make it out, but time will tell. The latest vids of the rapper behind bars shows him talking to his bae all in love and pics posted to his IG on his B day in June of 2022. You look real good. Thank you. <laughs> I love y'all. I love you too, baby. Hi, Bate. There you have it. Thanks for kicking it with your boy. Appreciate the love and support, man. Stay smart, stay alert, and stay real. I'm out, y'all.